Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and I'm glad you stayed with us. Tonight, I have one of my favorite guests returning. This is Wee Win from the Metro Toy Drive. Welcome back. Again, Thank Wee. you. And with him tonight, he brought his guest, which is Lisa Osheim, and you are the, you're with Counselor Education at Portland State Graduate School of Education. That's right. Very auspicious. So tell me, what, what is the connection here? Why, why are you two working together on the Metro Toy Drive? How does this work? So glad you asked. So Metro Toy Drive, we're a, obviously a nonprofit organization providing a uh, means of delivering happiness to kids year-round with toys and similar donations year-round. And we have a new program called Child Hero, which is a service learning program ah, for children. And that's how Lisa's involved because you are, what, what's your, your specialty there? Well, I'm the coordinator of the School Counseling Master's Program. And so I'm very interested in developing school counselors who will wor work with children to remove their barriers to social, emotional, and academic achievement. So I'm particularly interested in the impact that toys have in a child's life. Oh, well, that's interesting. I like that. I'm interested in how doing volunteer work as a child impacts them. That's, I think, I think that is a, a really important thing to get those kids starting started early. Oh, absolutely. You know? I think that's really great. So we let's just backtrack a little bit. Metro Toy Drive has been around, what, two years now, three years? What, what are we going on? Yes, uh, Metro Toy Drive um, was founded in tw uh, late 2010, mm -hmm. became its uh, official organization in 2011. So we're a little over a year young, okay. uh, almost two okay. years now, about two years. Less you two started years out now. just in the Portland area, but it's expanded from there. Yes, yes, I started as a volunteer for other uh, wonderful toy drives around this area, mm -hmm. and then I decided to form a new innovative organization to be able to service a much larger area and to be able to help year-round instead of just holidays. And that's the biggest difference, isn't it, is the, the year-round component. Yes. And, and who are the kids that you serve outside of the, the Christmas season? So these could be kids who are in hospitals, mm -hmm. um, shelters, any type of other agency that serve, services kids who are in need in some type of situation. It could be medical related, obviously, um, mm -hmm. um, health, it could be economic, it could be tragedy, something very personal. Perhaps a, a parent died or, or is in jail or something like that, yes. would you consider that yes. a, a, a situation oh, yes. where you would, yeah. And we have distributed to folks in that realm. We have done that already, yes. And the, the, um, the toys, you collect them then all year round, correct? Yes, oh. uh, we do collect year round. And the majority of the toys come through the holiday season, be ah. right before Christmas, obviously, and even right after Christmas, we get a large influx coming in. And a lot of that overstock provides us with toys to be able to distribute year round. Right. So where where do people take their toys? If if, if we had toys we wanted to, you know, to donate to, to kids that needed them, where would we where would we take them? Oh absolutely. So our toy drive runs through December twenty sixth. Okay. And people can visit hmm. any company Starbucks store in uh, Oregon and Southwest Washington. We have a few of those around. We do. There's about over 200 of them. There's three, right? <laughs> in this, like within a mile of this place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the partners um, at Starbucks, their employees are referred to as partners. Wonderful, amazing people. They're very supportive and they really do aim to help the community. So they serve as a very simple conduit for the community from individuals to other mm -hmm. local businesses and organizations who swing on by, drop off a toy or multiple toys, and from there, Starbucks, with a partnership through Zipcar, help to deliver mm. the toys to our oh, warehouse, cool. where we aggregate everything. And then from there, we invite recipients to arrive and get the toys, which are big days, obviously, next week, mm -hmm. which you are going to be I'm there. Going to it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be fun. Get to meet a lot of the yeah. folks who will be, yeah. that will be helping, so it's That's going to be really great. wonderful. So the people that will come in, it will be um, families that need toys for their kids, and then you also distribute to nonprofits. Yes, yeah, so we this year we will do both. So we have mostly uh, mostly agencies because they help us reach out to a much larger demographic faster than we can. We want to be very efficient, want to keep it uh, as a very lean operating system. Right. That's great. At the same time, we, there are families out there who have very specific needs that no one else can help, and with the resources that we have, if we have, if we can review their application on time, which they submit online mm -hmm. on our website, mm -hmm. metrotoydrive.org or .com, and we can review, and if we have sufficient supply, we can Give me provide. an example of what you mean, mean by a specific need. Uh, some families are in very dire straits, uh, especially single moms mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. uh, some folks who have been looking for a job, they can't find anything. And maybe it's a, a tragedy, someone lost their parent mm. compared to someone 
who maybe still has both parents. So in certain situations, there's absolutely no hope left, almost. Mm. And that's where we don't, we really don't want them to go away. We want, we want to help, so we try to help those who need it the most. That's great. Now I know you've involved um, children in the past, and Lisa, this is where you you come in. Tell me, um, tell me how how getting children involved in this is important, and what what your involvement is here. Oh, we've just had a great time getting the I kids bet. on board. The Child Hero Program is really a, a two-part um, experience for the kids. They have a Child Hero class that they attend with their families, and that's at the university. It's at Portland State, and great. so the kids um, spend a Sunday afternoon every few weeks at our university. And they, they go to the college. I bet they it's like very that. It's exciting, yeah. yes, and they're getting very comfortable there. Yeah. Uh, so we really yeah, enjoy that. Stage. Yeah, we thought we were very thoughtful about where <laughs> yeah. to take these kids, and we decided that the university was the best place. Get yeah. them used to yeah. the college experience, and they come to these meetings with their families. And we also have some of our graduate students who are studying to be school counselors there with us. Oh, and so okay. we have these um, different generations of helpers all coming together um, to plan the toy drive. And it's much more than just planning a single event. What we're actually doing is we're trying to get these kids to really embrace uh, their ability to help others. We're trying to, I guess, create the next generation of helpers. Oh, that's great. Yes, that's and we, great. we really want them to have a very vested interest in the outcome. And so they have set goals. They've thought very carefully about their marketing strategies. We really? have at times separated the kids and the parents, where the parents will <laughs> meet like in one corner and we're with the kids in the other corner. And um, together we're coming up with great ideas. The kids come up with creative ideas. They haven't yet fully learned how quickly their ideas can be shot down. Oh, and yeah. so it's so that So they're still freedom. very idealistic. And yes. So give me an example of something that uh, a kid comes up with as an idea for this toy drive. Well, one of the kids came up with the idea that um, he would hang all of his marketing materials at his favorite places. And so he, of course, had selected a location, a yogurt shop that was near his yeah, school. Yeah. And um, he had found his favorite places that he thought would really draw in the biggest crowd. And another child took that idea and ran with it and said he would go to his favorite places oh, yeah. and make certain that his mom was also using social media. And then another yeah, child but... built upon that and decided that she would actually put some videos up on her, her mom and dad's Facebook account. Oh, and and she has done that. She's actually created a few videos that have gone out through social media. That's and great. so they really bounced ideas off of each other and have built upon each other's ideas. And of course, as they do so, they get more excited. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. So how, how do they feel about um, helping other children? How does that impact the kids? Well, it has certainly given them a sense of personal power. Yeah. Uh, I think that they started the the classes really worried about the kids who don't have toys, but mm -hmm. it was more of a sense of sympathy. Mm. And now what they've developed is a sense of, of empathy as opposed to feeling sorry for the other kids. Yeah. What they're recognizing is that everybody's got some natural resources built in. And what they're trying to do is simply help um, where the resources are lacking. That's and great. so they're really understanding their place in somebody else's world. They're understanding what could lead somebody to a circumstance where they might not have toys. Right. And they're understanding the importance of toys in other children lives. They're realizing it's not just about having fun, that it's really about helping a child fulfill many other aspects of their development. So our, our heroes are feeling That's pretty beautiful. important. We have some pictures, I think, of the child heroes, and, and um, maybe we can bring those up on the screen, and we, you can kind of, uh, and at least you two can sure. kind of walk us through it and tell us what, what we're going to be looking at and uh, explain how this all works, okay? Sure. All right. So actually, I actually will let Lisa continue on with these photos. This is the classroom session. Oh, sure. So this is our class at the university. And we were working with some of the children on their goal setting and marketing strategies. Wow. So they're learning some very sophisticated business concepts at an early age. But how old are we talking about? Our youngest child is, I believe, eight years old. Yes. Wow. Up to what? Up to 12. 12. 12? Nice, nice. OK. So that picture there, uh, the programs, there's two components. There's a classroom learning mm -hmm. and there's field activities. Okay. Where they actually now go through an experiential learning process. So that picture depicts what happened at uh, Shriners Hospital. After oh. class one day, the kids got together and they helped to deliver over 200 toys to Shriners. And we, um, of course, uh, helped put together some logistics, mm -hmm. coordinated things, and the staff there were so wonderful. Oh, the, yeah, the kids. We actually got to tour the hospital, 
the yeah. kids actually got to sing happy birthday to one of the patients oh, how in the great. hospital. How Very great. rare opportunity. And I don't think they'll, and no one will ever forget that really. I, I didn't believe that something like that would even happen when we showed up. But Shriners, their, their staff and their volunteers are so amazing. So they really help the kids with really experience what that learning was like. That's a great, that is a great experience for those kids. Yes. Okay, now this, we're back to the classroom. Okay, yes. Okay, yes. So these are our parents and kids working together. I think at this point we were planning some, perhaps some events, if I recall correctly, uh, for their own Santa days. And the, the children get engaged as much as they wish. Sometimes they decide to step back and let the parents do more of the planning. Mm -hmm. And when we see that happening, we always encourage the kids to find their voice again. Yeah, I imagine there are parents who would, are just ready to jump in there uh, with all their, their yeah. great ideas. Oh, but, these parents yeah. are wonderful. Yeah. 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 So <laughs> the, the um, kids, they have their own ideas and they might, you know, hang up things in their favorite places around town. What, you said something about events. What kind of events would, they, would kids be involved in? What are we talking about? Sure. Well, we have a really big event coming up for all four kids, and it's actually this Saturday. Uh, between 10.30 a.m. and 12.30 p.m. and it's called Child Heroes Toy Drive. And what's happening is the kids, as similar to in college, you have a capstone class, the kids are actually orchestrating through support of university faculty, grad students, and all our sponsors to run their own toy drive. Wow. So in four different Starbucks locations, they've been promoting, uh, asking for help and support through any channels that exists within what they know, whether it's social media, personal friends, family. And our hope is that the kids will see and learn that when they go out to make a difference for others in their community, especially other kids, their community will come together to support their efforts. And we'd love for kids to learn that in a very early age, mm -hmm. to realize that there, mm -hmm. there's a lot of good in the community out there, yes. if you're willing to take the lead first. And we want the kids to be leaders. We well, want them to make a difference. Teach them to be leaders, that's a wonderful thing. And if they can do that, it'll be amazing yeah. for them. We invite the public to show up. So the kids are, there's four kids that are child heroes this year. Yes. And are they, uh, they work, or do this at the Starbucks that are like close to where they live? Is that how they do it? Or they're generally, generally, generally it's yeah. very close to where yeah. they, they're located. And each child has obviously a Starbucks store and that store is very supportive of their efforts. They've met the staff members, the managers. Mm, that's great. The partners know the heroes, they got their signage up and they're, they're just waiting for this big day to show up. And we hope that the kids will be surprised because a lot of these kids, they don't know if just if anybody how will show, will show up. Or, up. Yeah, if so anybody will bring any toys. Here we are on TV. Uh, hopefully, whoever's watching this will see one of these locations, maybe near them. They will show up and maybe bring a few toys and make their day to see the smile on That'd their face. Great. And people can take photos with the kids. Are the locations on your website? Yes, yes, there's a okay. posting for that, yes. Okay, so <laughs> I think this is great. The kids, uh, the kids that are involved, the child heroes, how do you find those kids? How did they come to become involved in this? This initial class consists of kids who are the children of the parents who have volunteered very closely with our organization. Okay. And a lot of these kids, I that believe, when they started, had some areas that we felt that they could really do well in with mm -hmm. the program, areas that we felt that by participating, they can improve upon as well. So for the first class here as a pilot program, we want to do everything possible to make them successful. And depending on how things go, we will assess and evaluate how things go after the season. It's about a five-month mm -hmm. program, the way it started this uh -huh. year with September's first class. We would love to expand it and create an application process to make it available to more kids. But that, of course, depends on what type of support that we can earn in the community. Hopefully, people who are watching this, whether they know a, they're a foundation, a, a company of theirs that would like to sponsor a child development, mm. a service learning program, that Child Hero could fit that profile. Right. Okay. So tell me then how the public can support this. Obviously, we can take toys to Starbucks. And these are unwrapped toys, I assume, yes. new, new unwrapped toys. Yes. Okay, so and we can go online and we can look and, and see where those kids are, which Starbucks they're at, and help mm -hmm. them with their, are they, are they competitive about it? Are they? Actually, Lisa, how did we choose to do it? <laughs> well, we tried to infuse a little friendly competition, mm -hmm. but they just like each other too well, oh, so they didn't great. fight on that. That's great. They, they've mm -hmm. really ended up I mean, being so supportive of each other. competition is fine, but you know, right. that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's been great. Okay, so how can, um, you, you said something about an organization might be able to become involved. Say, say if you know, my, my company wanted to become involved, how, how would we do that? What would we do to help the Metro Toy Drive? 
I or would, to help the child heroes or any aspect of it. Yes. Um, well, uh, like you said, people can donate toys at mm -hmm. any Starbucks mm -hmm. location right now through the, the 26th of December. They could definitely hopefully attend our Child Heroes event this Saturday to really see uh, what we have going on in the community. And from a larger strategic standpoint, we would encourage folks to visit our website, metrotoydrive.org or .com, and kind of read what uh, the program is doing and really to reach on our contact button on one of the tabs, just send us a message. So we'd be interested in learning more about the program and how we can help sponsor and be a partner in the program. And that would really help it to grow and develop because right now we want it, we're taking it slow, but mm -hmm. we, we want to do it right. Good. We want to make Good. sure we I work like every that. angle correctly so that this will be a very strong program that when kids enter into the program mm -hmm. and they participate, they will come out very spectacular. I have no doubt. I remember meeting, um, what's her name, Michaela? Michaela, yes. Michaela, yeah, she, yeah. Was, she was on here. And she was like one of your very, was she your very first child hero or one yes. of the very first? When the program was yeah. still in, the, when it was in its infancy. It really infancy. wasn't even a program yet. No, it, it wasn't. Just, yeah. It was just an idea. Yeah, so yeah. What would happen if we did this? And yeah. we tried it and she was very successful. Yeah. She got the community to show up to her special day at the Starbucks store. and. It's like, wow, this is amazing. If the community can do this with one child hero, what can we do if we actually increase the program to, yeah. to grow? And now we have four kids for this year. You know, in, in a couple of years, you're going to come on here, you're going to tell me we had whole classrooms that are our child heroes. Can you see that? I, I you envision know? maybe one day down the road, it, it could be Metro Toy Drive School for Child Heroes and Gifted Youngsters. There you go. I like that. So what, what do the kids get out of it? Obviously, they get the... Um, they, they get some, gain some leadership. They, uh, you know, learn empathy. They, you know, they're they're learning a lot of things. But what what else, Lisa? Tell me what else do you think that kids gain from this experience? Oh, sure. There's some very practical skills that they're gaining. They're watching all of the adults in the classroom as we interact and make decisions and mm -hmm. disagree and agree. Mm. And so they're learning these valuable business skills, <laughs> negotiations. <friendship> skills. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it's it's all being done in a really phenomenal way. I think that everybody is demonstrating exactly the kind of behaviors that we hope to see from our children when they grow up. And so these children are learning these very practical skills about how to get along, how to engage in group work. Uh, that, that is a skill to be cultivated. Oh, it certainly is. Yeah. They're really learning how to do it. They're learning how to navigate different personalities and different barriers and challenges. It seems like they're even learning some marketing skills and yes. things like that, aren't they? You know, how to how to market to the community to get back what they what they need for the kids. Well, we're just about out of time. Anything else that you want to add? What what else do we need to know we, before we let you go? Well, first of all, thank you for everyone who's watching this, who has supported us, to all our partners and sponsors of the program, um, the organization as a whole. We would not be here today if it wasn't for everyone out there. And to everyone who's even donated just a single toy, it really does make a huge difference. Yeah, I'm sure it does. And we hope to earn your support down the road and please visit our, our site and we'd love to hopefully find new supporters and sponsors yeah. of our Child Hero program. Good, good. I'm excited about going out there with you on the, on the 20th. So be fun. thank you, Lisa, for being yeah. on the show so much. We, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And thanks for tuning in to this episode of Community Hotline. Now you know where to go to take those uh, unwrapped new toys and support some of the kids in the community that, that need it, and also to help the leaders that these, uh, these child heroes are going to be. I'm Monica Weitzel. This is Community Hotline. We'll see you next week.